Have you ever wondered how the Brooklyn Bridge in New York survived Superstorm Sandy in 2012, or how the Golden Gate Bridge survived the 7.1 magnitude earthquake in 1989? Well, these bridges were built from one of the strongest engineering materials we have ever created, steel. Let's take a look at a cross-section of one of the cables supporting the Golden Gate Bridge. As can be seen in this close-up image, the steel cross-section is actually quite large and requires a lot of material to build. Did you know that if we were able to make these cables out of, let's say, silk, created by the spider that occasionally shows up in your room, we can make the bridge equally as strong with just a fraction of its weight? How is this possible, though? It all comes down to its structure at the small scales not visible to the naked eye. So we take a microscope and put it onto a spider web. We will see this sophisticated architecture and pattern not seen in typical steel or titanium materials. And the thing is, it's not just spider silk. Nature is full of these amazingly complex architectures. Take our bones, for example. At first glance, they seem fairly ordinary. But if you zoom in, you will see this complicated architecture within that allow bones to be both strong and light. How about the mako shark? On the surface, the shark skin seems smooth. But if you look at it through a microscope, you'll see these rough, denticle-shaped structures that enables this animal to be the fastest swimming type of shark out there. Again, it all comes down to piecing together and designing the structure in the right way. I hope to show you today that the creatures from nature offer us a lens into a whole new world of understanding, development, and ultimately, optimization of materials. Let's take a look at conch shells, one of the toughest she shells seen in nature. As on the surface, it looks like a shiny pink rock. But if you enlarge the structure, you'll see this beautiful architecture within that allows the she shell to protect itself against predators and survive. We have studied how to mimic the architecture seen in she shells and develop impact-resistant materials. We first create a virtual model see, in the computer, seen here, to then translate into a physical sample. Using 3D printing, we are able to mimic the detailed features seen in real conch shells using synthetic materials such as rubber and plastic. This is an image of the conch shell inspired prototype that we have 3D printed. We then test this material by dropping a steel object onto it. First, we test on a traditional simple material, shown here. And you can see that it shatters very catastrophically. Next, we test on our conch shell inspired sample, which is shown here. And you can see that a steel object actually rebounds, leaving very little damage on the sample itself. Now, from experiments, you can see that this sample has failed and this other one did not. But the very important question is, why? To help us answer this question, we created a computer model to understand mechanisms. This is a model of our Shishell inspired sample, and you can see that the complex architecture seen in conch shells actually trap cracks from growing through the sample, enhancing their impact properties. Imagine the next generation of helmets that can absorb energy and impact, or body armor inspired from she shells seen in nature. This illustrates how bio-inspired materials can improve our lives. Now, nature seems to have all the answers if we know where to look. But nature has answers to nature's problems, which aren't necessarily the same problems that we face in our modern world. So where do, so where do we turn to uh, if not nature? We create our own technologies. Take, for instance, airplanes. As both a passenger and observer, planes feel like the most majestic birds in the sky, with their broad wingspan and unmatched endurance. But a plane is not a bird. Planes, by nature of their purpose, are much heavier and bigger, and they fly much faster. If we were to make a functional airplane that exactly mimicked a bird, it would be far too costly and too inefficient. 
So even if we cannot directly make a plane from a bird, is there a way we can make our own materials and structures in the lab that will make current planes to be more fuel efficient and lightweight, for instance? In my lab at Berkeley, we are looking into optimization techniques and artificial intelligence, or AI, to design and manufacture cutting edge materials for modern challenges. I started working on this problem as a graduate student at MIT when I was really curious about how truly optimized nature is. So I wanted to create my own structures and materials in the lab, but I was faced with some challenges that I would describe here. Let's just say we have this huge pile of Lego pieces to work with, and I need to go from this pile to this optimized state. We can assume here that the Lego pieces are different materials, and this optimized state represents our dream material with the properties that we are looking for. Well, for this problem, I need a method to go from this pile to this optimized state. One method is just do brute force and try every single random assembly out there. But this may take billions of years to solve. Luckily, when I was working on this problem, machine learning and AI, especially in the context of Facebook tagging friends and asking questions to Apple's Siri and Amazon's Alexa, were making headlines. This made me start to think, could AI be used to design materials? Now, in order to do so, we require a way to represent a material in the digital world. One way is through an image that can be translated to zeros and ones. This is the language that computers understand. And this is where we had a eureka moment. To access this astronomically large design space through the eyes of machine learning, it came to us that we can represent a material as an image of zeros and ones with the different numbers corresponding and mapping to different types of materials, whether it be different polymers, metals, or ceramics. This mapping was a breakthrough we really needed to apply AI to our materials design problem. Now, in classic image recognition problems, AI, AI has been applied to classify whether an image is a dog or a cat based on color and texture extracted from images. We learned that AI can also be applied to design materials based on structural features extracted from our material images. We found that properly formulated machine learning architecture can be used to design, to design materials for properties of interest, such as strength, such as impact resistance, at a very accelerated pace, especially compared to brute force methods. This is a project where we designed a structure that was originally inspired from bone and then optimized using our AI algorithms. Let's take a look at a test of a very traditional structure shown here that's seen in several real world applications such as the Bay Bridge. You can see that this structure has failed very catastrophically without any warning whatsoever which can be very undesirable and likened to a sudden building collapse, which can be very dangerous. Now let's take a look at a test on a structure designed by our AI algorithms. You can see that the failure is much more gradual and the structure is still standing in the end. Now this could be a really a life-changing difference between a sudden building collapse and a building with small and gradual cracks that will give people advance warning and time to evacuate and repair. What our algorithm, is, our algorithm is essentially doing is moving material around to the most critical areas to efficiently maximize their use with minimal material needed. This shows the potential of AI to improve future materials and structures for extreme environments. Not only can we use AI to design materials and structures, but also to improve the manufacturing processes that make realizing these materials possible. I've been fascinated by the potential AI offers in manufacturing materials, particularly in 3D printing. Can we make 3D printers smart if they are driven by AI? By combining sensor technologies and AI, we show that we can automatically detect and correct for printing imperfections in real time, resulting in high quality parts and components. Imagine these AI technologies helping us manufacture chairs or desks in very challenging environments, such as Mars in the future. When we are thinking about any major challenge that we're facing today or need to face in the near future, materials are often the solutions to our problems. For instance, 
vehicles are responsible for over 15% of carbon emissions. And we can reduce this number significantly if we can develop stronger and lighter materials that use less energy. This means that we can achieve net zero goals and help to fight climate change. Better materials mean stronger and tougher synthetic tissues and organs, which can have a huge impact on healthcare in our lives. This means no more long wait lists for organ donors and just making the tissues and organs in the lab on demand. With new technologies based on bioinspiration and AI on the horizons, we can get closer to solving these challenges, improving the quality of life for people around the globe. Thank you very much.